I think she wants to wear white, white though. So this is the fabulous Betty. And you started at Bergdorf Goodman in 1976. So you are in your 45th year, 45 years now, right? 45. And I read somewhere that your first client was Babe Paley. Is that true? That I was tested. Stop. With her? Were you freaking out? I did not have the job. <gasps> and management had me test to see if I could sell her. What did you show her? Oh, God knows what I showed her that, like 45 years ago. She was one of the most beautiful women I've ever, ever. seen. Ever. Ever. I mean, with I wouldn't know what to do. Wonderful black hair with a white streak. And did she so already... I was so enamored with her hair. I said to her, you are not caring whether they gave me the job or not. <laughs> and I had this room full of clothes. And she sat there and I proceeded to show her. I'll never forget it. Down on the second floor. And did she actually strip down to her undies and try no, things on? No, I don't on? remember that. Huh. I really don't. And I remember showing her and tripping over the long dresses, which I still do. <laughs> when I show evening clothes, I have a terrible time with them. And I do trip over them. But I can see her sitting in that chair. She was extraordinarily beautiful. And I think a great deal of her beauty came from her persona because she was so nice. Really? Really nice. Did she? Sweet. Nice. Huh. So you can be beautiful and nice. And so they gave me the job at $200 a week. Stop it. Did she come back ever for solutions? Never saw her again. So she was truly that I remember Now that I remember. Well, you remember everything. That was the second floor because I worked, I didn't have an office. When did you get the office? I came in as worked in a uh, department that they opened up that Jeffrey Bean opened. And I wow. had worked for Jeffrey Bean. And he would come over once a week and do the department. And he wanted someone in there like me. And he was angry at me that I left to come here to begin with. And then we became really, really good friends. And I'd go over and have breakfast with him at least once a month. He had an office here on 57th Street between 5th and 6th. How'd you get involved with helping out with Sex in the City and Gossip Girl? Well, by that time, finally I graduated and they brought me in here. Mm -hmm. After about a year or more, mm -hmm. maybe two. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember. And um, I don't know, remember how I met Pat Field? She just came in my life. She's still in it. Now, I can't picture you and Pat Field walking Bergdorf's together. Oh. <laughs> and do you ever pick the same item? We don't even do that. We just walk. And okay. She, she can disappear. We have to sort of circle her while she's walking. Because if you start to talk to one of her assistants, go on to another floor, go on to a closet or whatever. She's very good. I love that. She's very good. Have you, did you ever see her shop downtown? When I, she, I did, actually, yeah. My daughter lives around the corner. Oh, that's cool. On 4th Street. And I used to go down and see it. It, it was fascinating. I love that. Fascinating. Now, tell us a little bit about the jewelry you're wearing today. Well, this I wore. Uh, this I remembered to bring that you were coming because it's um, from California that who did really extraordinary jewelry. What but his producer? his theme was basically the um, the angels. Is that and Rooster also? This is all Rooster. Oh, wow. And this was part of a month. This was like a month. I this, love that. This, this angel is, I think it kind of takes some month. I think this was my mother's, because as I said, I had a big jewelry. But he did beautiful, extraordinary jewelry other than this kind of jewelry. Here, you read the back of it. I have to have my loop to do it. It's teeny weeny. Maybe Maria can see it. But I will give you guys a chance and we'll loop it later and I will splice it in and tell you. Oh, but I love that. But he did, he did the That's pearl bad. pin that was pink pearl pin studded with diamond. He did beautiful monodiers. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Gorgeous that my sister-in-law had that were studded with different things. And uh, um, 
You know, I just had this conversation with someone. How do you use them now when they don't fit a phone? I know you don't care. I have the most beautiful gold monodier and that my mother brought out? in Venice. That's it beautiful. is gorgeous. But when's the last time you used it? Every time I dress, I do. Really? Oh. I well, put some good. money in and a lipstick. And you're fine. Let's talk about your bracelet. Well, the love bracelet. This is a very, very old one because my mother and father, who have been gone for a lot of years, gave me this bracelet. And this is Verdura, and I know you think very highly of Ward Landrigan. I adore him. How'd you meet him? He came over to meet me. As one does. Which often happens. Yep. And then we have a lot of clients. Mm hmm As the Joel jar. Mm hmm, mm -hmm very friendly with him as well. His jewelry is beautiful. It is beautiful. He's a master jeweler because he's a super Harvard intelligent. Mm. But he also gets to know his clients very well. So the jewelry he makes for them goes from the head to the pie. It's, that's a hard thing to come by. So if he makes something for Mrs. So-and-so, and he dines with her. He gets to know her inside, like he's married to her. But then how do you feel if Mrs. So-and-so auctions it off later? She doesn't. She doesn't? My people don't do that. Oh, well, that makes sense. So we were just talking about Sylvia Fermanovich. How would you, if I came in and I showed you those bamboo earrings and I said, help me, I want an outfit for these earrings and I want to mix it up. I don't do that. You won't do it? Buy an outfit for the earrings? Yeah. You don't buy earrings for an outfit. So if I have them and I'm wearing what I'm wearing today, am, you don't I, do that. am I wrong? If you, you have to be <laughs> secure enough if you own the earrings. Rock them. Dress will come or the pants or the sweater or whatever. If you are a jewelry collector and these women collect jewelry, I mean, I don't know whether they admit to it, but they have collections of jewelry. I have one client has the most beautiful safe in the whole world. It goes up to here mm -hmm. and pulls out drawers, you know? Should That's I wear nice. these earrings with this, Betty? Should I wear this? It's almost like collecting art. And will you tell And both them? of these women I'm talking about are big art collectors. Well, that makes sense. I think there's a huge overlap because jewelry is wearable art. Tremendous, tremendous overlap. Mm -hmm. If you have beautiful jewelry, you generally have art or sculpture. I agree with you. Now, when that client pulls the piece out and says, says, should I wear this or should I wear that? Will you give an opinion? Sure. Okay. Point to that one, say wear that one mm -hmm. without even thinking. I've been doing this for 43 years, they know. 45. It comes very easier than when I leave here at night and wonder what I'm going to do in the grocery store. Do you feel like you were born knowing how to pull things together? Definitely. My mother can come back and tell you that. As yeah. a little girl, everybody wore their cardigans on the front. Mm -hmm. I wore mine buttoned in the back. I love that. Well, the yes, first I time, was born for it. The first time I dressed with you, um, I came in because everything I had was so ladies who lunch, and I had a downtown, much more sort of serious looking Well, meeting. that's what people get very right, nervous about. Break that. loose. And it's so unimportant. Because mm. you walk into the restaurant, you sit down, that's it. And that's it. How do you hold your fork and spoon and knife? You know? <laughs> do you understand? I, dressing. For my own personal, has always been very easy for me. It's the mm -hmm. only thing I'm confident in. Mm -hmm. I don't add, subtract, or divide. I'm terrible in math. I don't use cell phones. I, love I don't even have Netflix. I mean, I'm in another century. But the one thing I do know is how to fit a dress. Mm -hmm. If it's going to fit someone, it, it, it's a gift. Whoever it is left me out of everything else. What do you think if somebody inherits jewelry, so they have their mother's jewelry, mm -hmm. and they think, oh, this isn't necessarily my style, mm -hmm. what do you tell them to do with it, or what would Sell you do it. with it? Sell it. Would you reset it? Would you make it more your own? If no. they want. You know, I have a nice fellow downtown who does mm -hmm. it, and mm -hmm. they love him, mm -hmm. Gary Cohn, and they love him. 
His mother used to work here, and he's a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he's always pleased everybody that I send. Someone took their great grandmother or their grandmother's friend of mine, 90 older than I. Her grandsons were getting married. She took her grandmother's three or four diamond ring, mm -hmm. and he set two different rings for the grandchildren, and they oh, that's were thrilled. Fun. Yeah. Thrilled. No, I'd, I'd love to see more people. If it's in your safe and you're not using it, it's a waste. Absolutely. Right? Make it work for you. Either repurpose it or sell it, but let it be out there. Well, this and same woman enjoyed. has a lot of big jewelry. A lot. Her husband bought her a lot in lieu of having a good marriage. He bought a lot of jewelry. And she went up to Doyle. I don't know if she took it or whatever. He said the things weren't great or whatever. Mm -hmm. I remember when he started, I knew Doyle. Really? People have strange things about jewelry, you know. It, like what? Well, it's either hidden in the drawer or locked in a safe, sometimes in a bank, and where they have, you know, um, sometimes forgotten. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they want to do something with it. Mm -hmm. It's It's like clean your closet, you know? Mm -hmm. Part with it, not as easy as that old suit or that old dress. I mean, what do you do with it? Right. So, um, I don't discuss jewelry that much with my clients. I just know they have it. Do you notice it when they come in? See, I feel I like mean, I've been with one young woman, and she's my younger one of my younger people. We go to, we go to Vidura. Mm hmm Good for her. And with the younger client who wanted to go over to Verdura, what did she what did she choose? Bracelets. Oh, fun. I don't know what else she's bought. She visits them quite free. Yeah. Plain gold, or did she do the, gemstones? The, uh, the heavy one. The curb link. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That's she's a forever. She's very attractive. She's six feet tall, and she's very chic. Well, that helps, and too. She doesn't wear a lot of jewelry. Now, if you are on the petite side, do you think you can still wear a big sculptural piece, like a huge no. ring? No, it's or out. Or should you? I, I think a lot of it is that with jewelry, it is very relationship-based. And if they feel connected to the designer, they're almost you know, they happy trust. to have the trust. pieces as a souvenir of that experience more than they've actually gone for it. I they think do it's trust. trust. And then you put yeah. your whole thing into her hands mm -hmm. and she could sell you. I'm sure. Do people buy design jewelry like you saw downstairs, you know, sort of offbeat design jewelry? I think that we're Theatrical seeing... Theatrical people maybe or whatever? We're seeing a split. So the actress Jennifer Tilly is an enormous jewelry collector and she buys really interesting pieces. So she bought like a big Paul Flato necklace. She goes for more vintage, but very, very cool pieces. Mm. So she's someone I think of as being more interested in the design, but then you also see the people that you'll always see, which is big stone, big stone, big stone. So that's kind of the, you know, I want to show my investment. I want to feel confident in my investment and it's not necessarily about design. Someone like Fermanovich, I think you're paying for design. Right? Oh, it's absolutely. The materials but themselves she's smart are complicated. Enough. She's smart enough not only to do jewelry. Right. Oh, those bags are very nice. The bags are extraordinary. They're very nice. They're collector things. They can be left out. I agree. Those are on really a table. lovely. Yeah, they can just be an object. They don't have to be put in a closet. Yeah. No, I'm very fond of... Have you seen her book? Yeah, it's beautiful. I think the book is extraordinary. I agree. Introduced my husband and I to Aldo, and we we dined together. I mean, we didn't. This is before people knew him, and he lived on right here. Stop. On Sixth Avenue. That's exactly where he lived, in, and right here on Central Park West and Sixth Avenue. And did you know immediately this is a fabulous jewelry designer? Well, he told us. You know, he had a couple of pieces, maybe at Tiffany. Okay. I mean, I went all through his life with him. We'd go to wow. his apartment. He made beautiful jewelry for me. And he kept it, he had wooden crates that he had put up in his kitchen, that like kitchen cabinets out of wooden crates. <laughs> he was very, he was small, very creative, very attractive, very sweet, very heavy accent. Really? In the end, before he died, because mm -hmm. he was one of the first people that died of AIDS, yeah. 
he started to find gemstones and use from down south. Oh. He was using. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. You know, like, uh, not turquoise, but tourmalines mm -hmm. and things. Or citrines or something Carolina, interesting. Places he was finding in the, from the mines. Oh, that's cool. Have you ever heard of that? I've never heard of it again. I mean, I think there are people who do it now. What did he make for you? He did my three gold things. I lost. I didn't want, I have spades, gold. They're about that thick. It should really be put on one thing because to put three of them on. That's a lot I have of work. Spades, diamonds, and the clover. Did you ask for them or did he present them to you? He showed them to me. And then there's the fourth one I didn't want. Okay. So, because I thought the four wouldn't. It's, there's not a lot of. So I have the three thing. and he made my ring. He did some beautiful tortoiseshell, gold, tortoiseshell and gold braces, which broke. Mm hmm. Well, delicate. They were too fragile. Yeah. Uh, what else did he do for me? Did he do earrings? I don't know. My husband was not that keen on jewelry. I had a... What was the ring? The ring is this huge star <laughs> sapphire. Oh, you have to ring that in next I time. I have that, I have. I really want to really see it. It's really the square one. Yeah. And it's signed inside. Fab. We'll get that fixed for you. Huh? We'll get it fixed for you. I don't think it can. I'm not going to wear it. It's too big. It's like huge. Why don't well, you take it out? Let it play I around. also have a diamond set. Another jeweler did. It was in the Sherry Netherlands. My mother-in-law went to. I forget their name. They put my... I have a five-carat diamond set mm -hmm. into one. I thought those from those days. Ooh. They set it in diamonds all over. Ballerina Big, style? Huh? Ballerina style? I don't know what you call it, but it... Does it flare out or is it more of a flowery it's, look? It's it's a ball. Oh. All diamonds. Oh, I love that. All diamonds with the big stone in the middle. Mm -hmm. Bombay. Was very big in those days. Yeah, that's chic. Yeah. Bombay is very, really, really nice. And that's that's back. That's big. Oh, I love okay. that. You and then wear my mother in law it. went to David Webb, but I was never part. I did have a pin of his that was stolen, one of the that the frog that he still makes with mm -hmm. the that's gone. Um, what What are your memories of David Webb, the person? I remember when we crawled upstairs in the first place he was when he was just starting. <laughs> you crawled? Well, it was a like a back little of tiny a building attic somewhere. Spot. I don't know. I don't even remember where it was. Well, my mother in law had a lot of his jewelry. How was the jewelry presented when he had his first place? Was it laid out? I don't even remember. Just a little tiny I don't spot. Even remember. I just remember. And then she went to this coven. You should look him up. I'm going to look him up. He did beautiful, fine jewelry. Okay. And my the one star I have left, they mm -hmm. were divine. Really? I'm going to look him up. K-O-V-E-N. Do you remember he, the first name? We'll find it. He was right I'll here in you. the 50s off of, on the east side. Okay. I mean, that's the thing that's so interesting is everybody was here. And so when you when you go well, through, well, women wanted nothing but jewelry. I have pictures of my mother and father-in-law's anniversary at the Hampshire House mm -hmm. on the second floor. They had a room, mm -hmm. and the pictures with the diamond. I love it. The diamond bracelets. I mean, like you can't believe. I love it. I hated it. I think it's so happy. I do because if you think it about it, it was after World War II. You see. Uh, well, but I think we're about to hit that now, which is the next question I was going to ask you. Hit it I think we're going to have another Roaring Twenties. I do. I think we've all been cooped up and everyone is desperate to get out and get excited. Maybe not this second, but I think it's coming. Not when you read an article like that. I, I still think it's coming. As working culture shifts, Manhattan is at a precipice. Well, if you read this article. Papers, that doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. I think that doom and gloom sells papers, but I don't think it's where we're headed. It doesn't sell papers. You know, they always act like the sky is I know falling. my building. Do you know? I've lived it? there 67 years. Yeah. It's never had an empty apartment. Mm -hmm. Never. Never in all the years I've lived there. Mm. I know three floors that haven't been rented for over two years now. Really? Wow. I, besides the others that I don't know that are empty. But don't you think it's part of the real estate cycle? I mean, we had 
what was it, 2008, the crash, and by 2011, like it was like it never happened. Nothing like this. You think this is much worse? These people find that they can go and work from home. Mm -hmm. And the article, the other article today is about them working from home. Uh, from home. I have to say, I hate working from home. I, I like would, being around I people. I don't think it's healthy. I don't either. What did you do during the pandemic before they reopened for well, I like to cook. Mm -hmm. So I that now I can't look at the. I, I I'm beside. I'm done. My, oh, I can't stand it. Have you gone out to eat indoors yet? Yes. Same. I have gone out. I went out the other night to a restaurant called. San Ambrose. Oh, sure. So in Secrets of a Fashion Therapist, you say buying jewelry should be like buying art. It's about collecting, and most people who like clothes do like to collect. You still feel that way? Absolutely. Is anything different in 2021? No. So Even if their drawers are filled with it and they're not wearing it, they still covet it. They still covet it. So if I'm a collector, in the book, you say the easiest place to start first is earrings because they can be as unobtrusive or as dramatic as you like. So I still feel that way. if I'm starting a collection and I want to begin with an earring, if you were going to grab an earring now, Gold. what would you do? Gold. Simple, a knot, a hoop, what would Gold. you do? You can afford a pearl one yourself, mm -hmm. but you can do a gold one with a jewel in it maybe, or yep. just plain heavy gold. Yep. Then you graduate to a bracelet. But if you're starting, I do believe that you would start in your, the most visual thing for you mm -hmm. and for the people that are looking at you. So if we're on Zoom and no one can see anything except from the neck up you and you want to make people notice you, Definitely go earrings. Eerie. Even if it's, I went to a Passover dinner on Saturday night and the hostess who was cooking mm -hmm. comes out in a white shirt, mm -hmm. apron, and long dangly earrings. Oh, I enamel like that. Earrings. They were orange enamel, looked like clovers, mm. flat, completely out of character, but it's sort of interesting that yeah. she did it. Because it Which signaled is, yeah. joy for her. It's yeah, a happy exactly. day. I'll yeah. just get dressed and I'll put my earrings. She could have come in her underwear. Right. And but the nice thing is she showed you and the kitchen that she yeah. cared. Isn't that <laughs> it was very interesting because it was completely out of mode. Very strange. Now yeah. if we do um pins. I like that in the book you say the one jewelry accessory you always encourage, you're wearing it today is a lapel pin. So there was just an article that we talked about, about men wearing a lot of pins as accessories too. I love pins. I love pins it too. It finishes off my wardrobe. I couldn't agree more. I so wear one every day. I'm a beginning collector. I want to start off with a pin. What should I look for? Some piece of gold. Gold. Something modern. Mm -hmm. You can wear it at the neck. You can wear it at the lapel, but mm -hmm. you can always wear it. No, it's absolutely it right. It goes with everything. It's, it's casual, it's dressy, it's whatever. That I but love. But something contemporary looking, you know, like you would buy a painting mm -hmm. if you bought a piece of gold uh, pin. You know, nothing motif. Mm. Not to go that way. I mean, something that you would have to add on in your drawer. It would be just something you wear with certain things. Something you just slap on. To wear a pin, is a habit that most people don't get dressed and have. Mm -hmm. And it makes such a difference. It's fun. Yeah, it is fun. You know, it, it, it's fun. Well, and it telegraphs personality. It does. It's, it's collecting. Yeah. And, and to collect pins is one of the, you know, I do that. I have necklaces like Meredith Frederick's necklaces. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got to ordinarily in ordinary times, I dress that way every mm -hmm. day. If somebody wants to come in and have some help from you with accessorizing with jewelry, how do they make an appointment with Solutions? Well, they just call the office. 
But I, I we, we do a full interrogation because I don't want to waste their time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing in it for me. I don't get a percentage. I don't work that way. I was thinking more, you have one big piece or one unusual piece and you've never known how to build around it. And that's something I would bring in and ask you. So yeah, I have this piece, I'm stumped. Because, um, Let's walk and think about it. They all very secure in their jewelry. Really? Yeah, uh, this one woman who has always, in regular times, always had a lapel pin on or some, always, or earrings or her bracelets. I mean, she's very good at it, using it. And at night, really. That I love. But she has only jar jewelry that she wears. Only? Now. Good for her. That's a good deal. And it's gorgeous. I'm sure. Oh, my God. Well, he loves her. Joel's Lucky girl. A very special guy. So if you were going to have one commission from Jar, what what type of piece would you ask for? I wouldn't have it. There would be no choice. It'd be what he wants. Point. You okay with that? <laughs> yeah. From coming from him, yeah. He reads you pretty well. He's psychologically Harvard born. Yeah. Is there I'm okay, any? I'm is there, okay with that. Is there any other designer that you would allow to tell you what you'll be wearing besides Joel? I like that woman from South America. Oh, from Anna yeah, I do. I like her because I like her, her all over the place mm -hmm. stuff. So if she said you'll wear this. You would yeah, do it. I would okay. Like her. I like the fact. It's with me. It's not so much, but I'm usually okay. Mm -hmm. It's really the personality that's doing mm. it for me mm. in this instance, I ha I'd have to like the designer. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't like the, the article. Is there any jewelry designer that you met, you don't have to say names, that you didn't like and it turned you off? No. Okay. No. I think in general they're usually well, pretty that, interesting. that nice man that they've moved into the better uh, that we passed today, he's another nice man. And, and, and jewelry people are different than clothing designers. Very. Jewelry is so much more intricate. I mean, stones, mountings. It's a lot of fun, too. Huh? It's also a lot well, of fun. the workmanship. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're taking it from gold, generally. Oh, sure. Gold, platinum, rubies. I mean, diamonds, emeralds. I mean, this is not buttons that you sew on a dress. There's something... I don't know, it's, deeper it's about it. deep artisanal craft. Absolutely. I agree. I mean, everybody can't who makes clothes do jewelry. Not at all. No. That's a, for, for most really talented craftsmen, it's a lifetime. Oh, I mean, I, even if you go to 47th Street and mm -hmm. visit those, it's been doing it forever. Different. Yeah. You know, and the guy take the watches apart and get them going. I mean, come on.